Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Hi, this is Amit Doshi, and I wanted to thank each and every one of our listeners. It's been two years since I founded IBM, and it's been an amazing two years. We wanted to learn a little bit more about who is listening to our shows, and so we put together a short survey. The survey is anonymous, and we aren't going to be collecting any personal information. I would really appreciate it if you could take a couple of minutes out of your day and go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and fill it out. Thanks, and please keep listening. You're listening to the Empowering Series, a path to creating a better you. Through purposeful life changes and a positive shift in thinking, you could find yourself leading a more productive and rewarding life. In this series, we're looking at how to be a better boss. The show will bring you a live session between life coach Zarina Punawala and a willing participant who wants to improve themselves. Zarina Punawala is a trainer and motivational speaker and CEO of Abzo Unique. With over seven years' experience, she works with reputed multinational organizations conducting training workshops within the corporate sector and among student communities all over India and abroad. She provides image consulting, grooming and personality development, personal coaching for CEOs, senior managers and politicians. Taking the hot seat is Amit Doshi, tech entrepreneur and founder of podcasting network Indus Fox Media, who's bringing this show to your ears. So, shall we begin? Hi and welcome to the Empowering Series with me Zarina. I am still sitting in conversation with Amit and we're going to continue talking about the challenges startups face these days. Hey Zarina. Hey. Uh, so I have a question which is, uh, I think it's a question that a lot of startups face, right? I mean mm-hmm. like as you start expanding out a team of people who you're working with on your startup. Right. Uh, there are obviously good things and bad things that happen. Absolutely. Right? I mean, like, you know, you have uh, positive developments and negative developments. Now, as an entrepreneur, I have a tendency to share the positive developments, no matter how minuscule, mm-hmm. far and wide, right? I mean, like, making sure that everyone, and I mean, like, you know, it's a way to keep people happy and motivated Absolutely. and, like, you know, get them into what it is. But I also have this tendency to not share some of the negatives of what's going on outside mm-hmm. of the people who are absolutely kind of core to that particular thing if that makes All sense right. right you know what i mean like yes, i don't yes. i don't uh put it out in front of everybody okay. in the team, right? I mean, like, you know, if there's a sales issue, which is negative, I'll talk to the salespeople about that. If there's a production issue, which is negative, I'll talk to the production person about that. Right. You know, but I don't try and spread it. You know what I mean? I try and keep Absolutely. it very contained. Okay. Uh, but I also feel what that does is it causes a situation where not everybody understands what is going on. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, like they have incomplete information at that point in time. Yes. And that's dangerous. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, I mean, like, so I, I just wanted to, uh, how do you think we should go about dealing with these kinds of issues that come up? All right. So, yes, it's amazing that you're talking about all the positive things that happen mm-hmm. and positivity is contagious. So you sure can go ahead and spread that epidemic right. in your organization. But when you say negative, I'll replace that word a little okay. bit here. We're talking about contingencies we're mm-hmm. talking about situations right so when you confine a problem mm-hmm. to yourself maybe a couple of people in your team right what you're doing is there are two possibilities one you have chances of um, dealing with that situation mm-hmm. in a closed room right that is a possibility and it works right the second one would be that you're taking away the chance of somebody else in your organization giving you a solution. Now, I'm talking about this, keeping your strength per se. Right. So I'm not talking about a tall organization with too many different areas and hierarchies. Right. We're talking about a more... Uh, yeah, like a platter organization. Yeah. yeah. So basically, company. in a situation like that, you are closing your doors to a possible chance right. of solution from somebody else right. whom you probably don't expect it coming from. Correct. All right. right. So first and foremost, the positive bit, always share it. Okay. Uh, situations, problems. Hmm. When it is a problem to do with sales, right. I usually feel sales is the backbone of an organization. Yeah. At the end of the day, it all boils down to that. Yeah. That is a problem for everybody. Yes. So the sales aren't happening. How is the marketing going to happen? How are you going to advertise something? How is the money and the revenue coming in? Right. There's nothing happening if sales isn't. Right. So yes, if there's a problem with a specific, since you mentioned like sales, then make sure that everybody is informed. Have a group meeting. Okay. Have a meeting with the organization. Okay. This is the issue we are 
facing today. Right. This is a challenge. Now we need to overcome this challenge right. and face this obstacle in some certain way. Correct. So in that situation, I need suggestions. Okay. Okay. That is a possibility. Right. However, when you're talking about accounts, mm. you're talking about numbers, you're right. talking about, um, you know, the, the funding, investing and revenues and all of that. I think you need to confine the team. Okay. Those are things that have to be very, very specifically shared. Right. Should you not have an accounts team? Should you not have a team that handles these, um, you know, queries and right. problems and the numbers? Then there should be just about one or two people. Okay. Not because you are keeping things a secret. It's because this is confidential and discreet information. Right. Numbers can be very good. They can be very bad. Right. So that is something the boss has to deal with. Right. And he has to make things right all the time. Right. You know, and numbers, we're all greedy for numbers. So they're never enough, frankly speaking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, those areas where um, the financial aspects are concerned, right. usually uh, bosses or startups make the mistake of sharing numbers with everybody in the team. That's what I kind of this yes. about, right? I mean, yes. like, uh, you know, I, you want to have a certain amount of information available to people. But right. at the same time, I feel like uh, too much is not a good thing. Absolutely not. Yeah. Too much of anything is not good. And um, no information is better than having, you know, incomplete right. Right. Yeah. information. Exactly. So either way, we can save ourselves from this circumstances. So how you do that is basically if a problem in terms of numbers is arising where the teams are supposed to know. Mm -hmm. Share it and share it openly. Okay. That well, we're not able to hit numbers. Hence, we have had a loss of 10%, right. 20%, 5%. Right. But that's about it. Right. We need to increase our profits by right. this much margin in this much time. Correct. That's the kind of conversation you have with everyone. Okay. But in terms of the financial crunches, investments, the funds, etc., right. you discuss that only with a certain number of people right. who have their expertise. Who and know that stuff yeah. Yeah, and basically aren't going to freak out over like, you know. Uh, yeah, like, oh my God, what is happening to this company? Yeah, exactly. I mean, oh, it, we're growing so fast and that could be a great thing. Yeah. And then things aren't working out that could be a bad thing right so, no, I mean like if you don't have experience then some of these things come off as like uh, you know I mean like if you're a funded uh, kind of company mm -hmm. and you have 18 months of runway to exist right that's actually in the startup world ridiculously good yes but if you tell somebody else that oh we only have a year and a half to exist right they'll start freaking out absolutely so absolutely. I, you know I mean like you're right it needs to be with the Specific. Right, the right people, the people who have like a base of knowledge to deal with the information. Absolutely. Yeah. So there is information that is going to motivate your team mm -hmm. to go out there and perform better when right. they know that, okay, you know what? We are in a situation. Yeah. We have a problem. The team loves this kind of work the, and the fact that, you know, this is a creative industry. Right. People are going to want to give their best. Yeah, no, that's okay? That makes so sense. It, it helps them. It kind of motivates them. Mm -hmm. Pressure can be motivating too. Yeah, absolutely. So you can create that pressure. Absolutely, it. absolutely. But when it comes to, um, you know, the analytical aspect mm -hmm. of the business, those are things you must be very specific right. in terms of whom you're sharing it with. Right. Because it has to have expertise. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right? That makes sense. Because that'll take away the tension from you too. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I right. mean, like the and uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, like sharing problems is helpful. It is. It is sharing problems is very helpful. <laughs> you know, that's my job. Yeah. I let people share their problems. <laughs> so I usually am uh, uh, spoken of as a sponge. Okay. You know, just absorb. Okay. <laughs> just keep absorbing all of it. <laughs> so yes, let people help you. Just you know, solve all those problems by sharing them. Cool, cool, cool. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, let me ask you another question, which is. Um, so I like to work in a specific kind of way, right? right. I When I uh, put together anything in writing, when I put together any proposals, when I put together any kind of concepts or anything like that, I like to be very um, uh, very organized in how I put this meticulous. stuff together. Metic well, I, yeah, meticulous. I, mm -hmm. I, I guess. But I mean, like, you know, I feel like, uh, uh, and this might come from just how I've done stuff over the years, but I feel like, you know, giving people bite-sized chunks of information which are easy to digest right. is kind of the way to get them to understand your point right sure. so you you and it lets you kind of draw a uh, path mm -hmm. from one point to the next path so i mean I, I, you know i just kind of like doing things in that kind of way okay. that's not always the case a lot of people like to do things in like you know they write in a very different kind of format or a different kind of style and i mean they, this is individualistic and people are different they're not everybody is the same absolutely but how much should i try and kind of force people into doing things the way i want them done okay 
we're not going to try and imply the force right what we're going to try and do here is understand certain protocols that a company must follow okay all right every organization has a structure mm -hmm. be it a small one or a big one and the structure doesn't have to be specific on paper right. and things like that it doesn't have to be very well um, formed and you know planned out right. but it has to be a simple understanding of how the organization runs the hmm. expectations that you have are not for yourself here right, amit right. they are for your organization correct yes. you expect a certain type of work done right as the company correct. and the way you present yourself right so that is something that has to be common to all yeah that's true you know so you don't have to think about um, the force right. you have to think about the protocols right certain things have to be placed right certain things have to be done yeah okay all right so we're not talking about you wanting your team to do certain things it's about them having to do it right for the betterment of the organization right so you lay certain expectations and you expect absolutely them to kind of, absolutely right. and those expectations are not personal Right. You know, you don't want them to dress a certain way or do certain things or uh, work a certain uh, timing because right. you want it. Actually, that kind of brings me to another kind of question, right? I mean, like, how does one establish a particular? I mean, like, you're talking about dress code and you're talking about mm -hmm. timing and stuff like that, right? So, I mean, like, right. how does one establish a company culture, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you want a positive culture. You want a culture yes. where people are working hard and they're doing a lot of this, but at the same time, you want a culture where they're not subsumed by work constantly right so right. i mean like you want to create like a positive kind of work culture so how how does one go about doing that okay so let me ask you something mm -hmm. on it what do you think the work culture around your space is so it's mostly casual right i mean mm -hmm. like this is a creative kind of space and so i mean like people are uh, the thought is that you know it's task oriented and right. rather than being like time oriented and it is uh, it's a very casual very kind of uh, informal approach to work okay. which i sometimes don't like so much but that's kind of how it is right now <laughs> all right so basically um let me put this very very simply in front okay. of you we have a corporate culture yes okay and we have this creative culture correct okay so we we do belong in these two specific areas more or less right. everybody comes under these two right the problem is both have stereotypes yeah so when you're talking about the corporate culture and you see somebody wearing Blue shirt, a nice tan yeah, pants. yeah yeah you yeah. know the, the 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 kind of typical stereotypical <laughs> yeah. dressing similarly the creative culture too yeah they have uh, it yeah. absolutely is i mean like you know floppy hair shorts flip -flops. and flops um yeah. the out of the bed look that's yeah. what i like to call it yeah, which... so <laughs> when you see somebody with the out of the bed look the first question is oh you know are you are you in the creative industry advertising <laughs> marketing maybe i mean what do you do you definitely don't go to an office space 95 right right right, right right so this stereotype has been created in both spaces okay. whether it's the corporate or the creative world okay and it's time for us to break stereotypes completely Yeah, I agree with that. I think that you know, I mean like people who are dressed well doesn't mean that you can't be creative. Creative absolutely. Yeah. And neither is it the other way no, around. No, 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 exactly. Yeah, so, just because you're you're dressed in a non-conformist way doesn't mean that you can't apply financial analysis yeah, to a particular totally, set of totally. data. But you know, see, I'll tell you Amit, I personally feel uh grooming yourself and coming with a certain amount of uh, manners right. to your office space a way of attire is very important I, and i don't mean you have to wear the blazers and suits and right. be all um, you know um pinned up but right, right. at the same time how do you know the different environment that you are entering right for example how do i know i'm coming to work how do i feel like i'm coming to Right. If right. I'm dressed the same way that I'm dressed with my friends at a coffee shop, right. or when I'm going um, probably partying or just hanging out, right. like we'd say, so how would I know the difference? No, that makes sense. I mean, like, I'm sure there's like you know, I mean, like there's a psychological aspect to the there fact is, that there yeah. is. There is. Now yeah. we don't wear office clothes and go to the gym, do we? No, we don't. Exactly. Why? Why not? Well, you're still wearing comfortable clothes, probably. Just put on your shoes and walk. <laughs> put on your shoes and do your dumbbells and right, do all right. your triceps and biceps. But it puts you in a frame of mind. It puts you in a frame of mind. Right. So dressing correctly doesn't mean um, being uptight and absolutely prim and proper and well groomed. Right. It does mean coming with a sense of getting to your workplace, accomplishing right. something. Right. Right. You know. Right. So yes, I'm going to work. You you look like you're going to work. You feel like you're going to work. Right. So it sets you in that space, that zone, and it also changes the way you're working. Mm -hmm. I also think grooming is very important. Yeah, I agree. So you can have 
long hair short hair no you, you just can need have to be neat about this stuff neat yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i mean you like need to be groomed. yeah you know what i mean like you shouldn't look unkept absolutely you need to come clean to work yeah, basically yeah, absolutely. you need to come clean and you need to look clean yep so I it just that. gives a nice feel to the work environment right you know i absolutely buy that i think that that makes a lot of sense i mean like i need to kind of sit and kind of figure that out that's that's very um, possible yeah. <laughs> i'm pretty sure you'll do a good job with that <laughs> but just a couple of mandates for the organization right. it adds to the vision and the mission like we discussed yeah earlier. no that makes sense i think maybe we should look at kind of trying to see how we can make that absolutely uh, this because yeah. this is the foundation and right. when you are beginning and when you're starting out the foundation is extremely important yeah no so the sure the stronger your foundation the stronger will the building no and these things they're tough to change i mean they like are. they're very tough to change right i mean like if uh, you let a certain uh, behavior harden right? right i mean like that essentially then becomes the way that everybody who comes in will start behaving totally. like that and totally. so i mean like you got to take care of the stuff you do so. coming to work shouldn't be a subconscious process right. we've talked about the conscious yes, and yes, subconscious yes, mind yes. coming to work is a conscious activity mm-hmm. one needs to be there one needs to be present right and in all of themselves they have to be there you know mentally right. physically even in the way they dress yeah no that so makes it all sense counts. yeah that makes and sense and as to the total that makes sense that makes sense to me that was an episode from the empowering series how to be a better boss as they talked about problems faced by startups next week zarina and amit will look at questions for the boss for more information find ibm podcast on twitter facebook and instagram hey man <laughs> just help me out man i need some i need some podcast man i haven't had a fix in a week just need some Don't you worry about it. I got podcast galore for you, man. Just go to ivmpodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, man. I'm going to check it out.